All right guys, welcome back to the shop. This video is axe handles for beginners. How to pick the right axe handle, what are we looking for? Um, so I've got a list right here and I'm gonna kinda read off the list because there's, there's a bit to unload and I, I don't wanna just take it off the top of my head. So uh, I'm gonna go in order with what is, uh, to me, what is the most important thing for, for a beginner to look for. Um, and number one, it's not grain orientation, okay? It's the right size. You want the right size handle. If you don't have the right size handle, it's gonna be all jacked up. You know, if you put a, a boy's ax head on a 36 inch, you know, straight handle, it's, that's not what you're looking for. So I've come up with kind of a, uh, a rough guide, and that is for, for the length. For every pound of ax head that you have, roughly one foot of length. Now there are exceptions to that, uh, to that idea and, and we can get into that later. Now the next and the, the more important part is the dimensions of your tongue, okay? This is the tongue and you want your tongue to be slightly bigger than the eye, slightly bigger than the bottom eye on the ax head, okay? Now sometimes you'll get a handle and the tongue will fit perfectly into the eye. That's rare, that's, that's not very common. When you're looking at, you know, Whiskey River handles, their tongues are big. They're bigger than the eye. You're gonna have to carve it down. And in all actuality, you want to be able to carve it down so that you can ensure a tight fit because if the tongue's too small and you do fit it in there and you've got gaps, that's no good, you don't want that. Um, it can do, if you're in a pinch, it'll do. Now what'll help to ensure that you have the right size tongue for your eye is a tape measure, right? So you'll measure the bottom eye. I prefer a set of calipers, okay, or a caliper. This, uh, this will help you while you're fitting it. This will also help you while you're choosing the ax head. You can pick these up on Amazon for like 10, 15 bucks. These are, these are, these are an absolute must if you plan on doing a lot of ax heads. Now on the subject of picking the right size. Generally speaking, most of the time, the dimensions of the tongue are going to be the right dimensions for the right size head that fits that length and that style of handle, most of the time. All right guys, number two, pick the style or the pattern of handle that fits your needs, okay? So we can see again, back to this handle, this handle has some curves to it. Super sexy handle, right? It just looks good. I don't know why, but I, I just, I want, I want to chop something with it, right? Curved handles are great. They look good. Um, and there is purpose to these curves. There's, there's, uh, it's not just ergonomics, the geometry and the balance of, of, of how these curves balance ahead depending on your swing. So that's great. And we love these. With that being said, if you're splitting firewood, chances are you, you, you don't want a straight handle or a, a curved handle correction. Curved handles are weaker, okay? They break easier. The grain doesn't run as straight through them, okay? We can see that. So we're looking for a straight handle for wood splitting, right? Um, also, a curved handle this curved handle sets this head back further on the on this center line of this handle. Um, and if you have a huge pull on that handle, maybe it gets too pull heavy, okay? So those are things to consider. Throwing axes, you know, you may want, you know, this super cool curved, you know, with a, a fawn's foot on it. Um, I prefer a straight handle. It releases out of the hand better. So do your research, do your homework on the, the, the style of handle that you need, whether it be curved or whether it be straight. I know a lot of the time people don't want a straight handle because it just doesn't look good. But straight handles function well uh, a lot of time. Another point on straight handles, if you're looking for a super tight fitting head, curved handles, when you're hammering them, they don't seat as deep into an ax head. That's just, that's just the physics of it. That's just how it works. Is, am I saying that they don't seat deep enough? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is, is as a beginner, 
you're going to have an easier time getting a straight handle to really see into that head than you are with a curved handle. Uh, I love curved handles. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love curved handles. All right. Number three is grain run out. Okay. And again, not grain orientation, grain run out. Now I'm going to put some oil on this handle real quick and, and then you'll be able to see the grain run out a little bit better. So generally I don't, I don't like to oil the handles before I hang them. Um, but in this case, this case I will. Uh, and it probably, probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you have a handle sitting around uh, to oil it and kind of keep some of that moisture out from the winter. Now see each one of these lines, each one of these lines represents an annual growth ring. Okay. And that's what grain run out looks like. So that is um, like a topographical map. Okay. So each one of those is a layer. Okay. Now, now depending on where that run out is, is going to depend on how weak your handle will be. Okay. So the idea is, is that at that layer, that layer is where it would crack and, and split up. Okay, so to me, grain run out right here on the neck is where you're going to have the most issues. We can see run out down here on the palm swell, on the fawn's foot. That's not an issue at all. Okay, and you're, you're going to have run out on every handle, but it's to what extent the run out is and the run out in the wrong place. Now, so we've identified grain run out. And in my opinion, grain run out is the, the, the number one flaw in a handle is excessive grain run out. Um, generally speaking, a knot and, uh, and wavy grain, those are bad. And a, a big knot would definitely be the worst, but generally speaking, there's no knots and ax handles. That's that stuff gets graded out at the factory. We do see run out. So, so why is run out not the number one thing on my list for new beginners to look for in an ax handle? I'll tell you, if, if you don't get the right size handle, it doesn't matter if there's run out in it or not because ax head doesn't fit on the handle. Okay. So we can, we can't get to grain run out. So grain run out doesn't become an issue if you can't swing the ax, right? Next up, number four. Now we're going to get into it grain orientation, right? This is, this is what everybody, everybody screams grain orientation, great orientation. And, and basically the idea behind that is it the, see if I can get this to focus. And the proper grain orientation is the annual growth rings going vertical in line with the axe head. Okay. That's proper grain orientation. Now, most people, when they look at grain orientation, they look down here at the fawn's foot. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something. Grain can change even on an 18.7 inch axe like this, the grain orientation from the palm swell all the way up to the tongue can change. I've seen it. It it's look at the grain orientation in the tongue. That's going to give you a better indication of what the grain orientation is near the shoulder where ax handles break more than the indication of what it looks like down here. So, and I'll, and I'll tell you this on this handle also, you see all those zebra stripes. Okay. That's all that grain run out that we're talking about. Total grain run out. Okay. But when you look at the handle, it's perfect grain orientation. Okay. So you got to look at more than just the grain orientation. Um, now on this subject, the old timer swore by it. Okay. That was, a, that was the number one thing since then multiple ax manufacturers, um, and I believe the US Forest Service have done testing and noted that 
grain orientation doesn't really matter as far as the strength and longevity of a handle goes until you get into, I think it's something like 24 inch length handles and up. That's where grain orientation starts to matter. So when you're looking at short handles, it can be completely horizontal, okay? And again, the old timers are gonna tell you and the, you know, the ax Nazis, they're gonna say, oh, grain orientation, I get it. It's your handle, you get, get whatever handle you want, not my handle. Um, my other argument to proper grain orientation is I've got about 40 sledge hammer heads. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a boatload of them. I collect them when I'm out picking for axes. I also get the, especially the old sledge hammer heads. So with that, I've cut off a lot of sledge hammer handles. And I'll tell you something right now, you will almost, I don't know if I have ever found a sledge hammer handle with proper vertical grain orientation. They're almost always, almost completely sideways, completely wrong grain orientation. So if a sledgehammer, it's okay to have from the factory horizontal grain orientation, why is it not okay on an ax? Okay. So that's just something to think about right there. All right, moving on. Heartwood versus sapwood. Okay, this is a good example right here. So sapwood, you're gonna see the lighter color and then moving into the, so we can see here this uh, lighter tan and more white color is sapwood. And this string right here that comes most of the handle is heartwood, okay? So the sapwood in a tree, in a, in a, in a living tree, is, is the life of the tree. That's where the growth is happening, okay? Once it transitions into that darker core of the log, that's called heartwood. That wood's dead, there's no life in that. Um, sure, it'll still hold you know, moisture, but, uh, but it's dead. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this works, but the heartwood, once it dies, it shrinks. And I'm not sure if it's from compression from the sapwood compressing it, um, but regardless of the fact, generally speaking, sapwood is more flexible, okay? Uh, it's easier to work and, and it's more shock absorbent because it's more flexible. The heartwoods, a lot of the time, it's more dense, it's more rigid and, and it doesn't absorb the shock when you, when you go and, and you chop. Now, the old timers again used to say, heartwood's terrible, heartwood's terrible, heartwood's terrible and that it will break easier, it's more brittle. Recent testing has shown that heartwood is just as strong, but it doesn't absorb the shock as well, okay? So I personally, I personally prefer heartwood in my handle. I like to see the contrast, okay? I think it, I think it just, it looks good. Um, so with that being said, for a beginner, what does it mean to a beginner? Well, this is a good example again, because I have sapwood and heartwood when you're fitting a head on an axe handle when you're when you're shaping it you're sanding it you got your rasp whatever you're using a lot of the time that sapwood it'll come off a lot easier than the heartwood okay so you gotta you gotta really pay attention you're working one side and it comes off at a certain rate you can remove it at a certain rate and then you flip to the other side and now all of a sudden it gets really hard well, now you're used to putting so much pressure on the heartwood, when you flip it back to the sapwood side, you can take too much off, okay? So that's, that's the issue with the, the sapwood and the heartwood. Um, so something to touch on, a couple other pointers to touch on for beginners, choosing an ax handle. Uh, if you haven't already decided what head you're gonna hang, maybe hang a hatchet head first, okay? Because hatchet heads, Hatchets are easier to put together than full-size axes, okay? They take a lot less pressure to hammer, uh, to, to seat the, the handle into the head. Uh, it takes a lot less uh, wood removal, okay? They're just all around an easier, an easier hang to do. So I, I would recommend that, not to mention it's cheaper for hatchet handles. And get this in your head right now. If you're okay settling for uh, kind of a crappy hang, then, then you're gonna get it right on the first time.
okay? But if you're looking for perfection, if you're looking for a super tight hang and you want it completely sealed up and you want that, that uh, wedge to just be perfect and you, and you want it to be, it's gonna take you a few times. Unless you're maybe you're a woodworker, you're just good at whatever you do, um, you might pin it on the first time. But if, you were, if you're looking for perfection, it might take you five, 10 times, 20 times, who knows? Um, so with that being said, that hatchet is cheaper and easier to do. So when you get that hatchet handle on there and it's all jacked up and it doesn't look good and you're not gonna settle for that, cut it off. Go buy another $10 hatchet handle and try again. If you uh, have anything to add to this, leave it in the comment section, drop a comment, hit the thumbs up. That helps out the channel a ton. Um, and, and until next time, I'll see you guys.